interesting story coming out of Barcelona. I think whenever we mention Barcelona, the words interesting story are, are not far behind. But it, it regards uh, Martin Braithwaite, what's happening there? Yeah, I mean, Barcelona are in a kind of standoff with him because they want him to leave and he is refusing to go because he's got two years uh, left on his uh, contract. And uh, interesting intervention today from the... Uh, the director of the Danish Players Association, who is standing up for uh, Braithwaite, and he says the treatment that uh, Braithwaite is experiencing is completely unreasonable, uh, something that falls between intimidation and harassment. It's shameful how Barcelona is trying to get out of this contract. So really, really strong words from the director of uh, the Danish Players Association. A lot of people in football have been sort of bemused, concerned, critical of the way Barcelona have been uh, behaving uh, this summer, the way they've been behaving in the transfer market and also the way they've been treating some of their players like Frankie de Jong, uh, but also there are players like Martin Braithwaite. He's got a contract with Barcelona. Just because they want him to leave doesn't mean he has to leave. And we saw those sort of shameful scenes uh, when he came out for a game and, you know, he tried to applaud the supporters. He was being booed by them before he'd even kicked a ball. Uh, and uh, the director of the Danish Players Association saying that the way he's been treated is something between intimidation and harassment. Uh, and it's shameful how Barcelona are behaving. Intimidation and harassment. Andy, Melissa, what's your take on this? Because this is an incredible story, isn't it? It is shameful because... I can understand that Barcelona have come from a position of needing to remedy all their financial woes that, you know, the previous president and board had saddled on them. But the way they're going about doing it is not the most moral. And I feel sorry for the players because they actually haven't done anything wrong. They moved there with this, you know, dream and the ambition of playing for Barcelona this historic club who pushed the whole, you know, more than a club, family, uh, society, community. And they've gone there, signed contracts in good faith, and are now being pushed out of these contracts. And I said it with De Jong as well. We've spent months talking about him as a transfer subject. This is a human being who's being forced to leave the place he loves because, you know, they want to not stick to the contract they've given him and not pay him the wages they agreed to defer. So I, my shock is, why are players still queuing up to go to Barcelona? That's what I don't understand. Like, hello, are you watching all this happening? <laughs> Andy, Barcelona will, will argue no player is bigger than the club. And this is another, maybe a harsh example of showing it. Yeah, but contracts are contracts, like Melissa said. And I think it's, it's very dangerous. Football's a very small community. Players talk a lot amongst themselves, and it will reach that point where you think, why would I sign for a club when, I, when I'm not actually going to get the money that I'm owed? I think the worrying thing for them, and yes, these are the stories that are making the headlines, Brathwaite, De Jong. I think the interesting thing is in recent weeks, as they've tried to register everyone, and of course they registered a lot of them for that first game against Adeo Vallecano, but not all of them. They couldn't get Jules Koundé on board, for example. They still don't have the money for that. It will probably take Memphis going to affect that. But they've gone cap in hand again to their senior players. They've gone cap in hand to Sergio Busquets, who his dad played for Barcelona. He's a Barcelona lifer. And they've asked him to take another pay cut. And he's gone, what, another one? Really? And I think when a player like that, who is totally on board with what Barcelona is about, about that more than a club thing, who totally understands that, if he's saying no, I think you're hitting a, a really, really big problem. Andy, are they actually taking advantage of players like Busquets and Piquet who have such a strong affiliation mm. with the club? They're basically saying to them, subsidise mm. our incomings, subsidise the players we want to bring in. And a lot of those players, you wonder, do they actually even need them? Is there a necessity to no. bring in players that you can't even register? No, but I mean, this has always been Laporta's idea ever since he was president of Barcelona for the first time. That idea of you speculate to accumulate. How do you get the sponsorship deals? How do you fill the stadium? 
if you haven't got those big names. So it's not even really about improving the team. We can say, do they need those players from a sporting perspective? That's not really the way he sees it. Get, getting Lewandowski, which was always a bit superfluous, it's about selling shirts, it's about getting sponsorship deals. I don't think we've heard the last of Barcelona in these remaining <laughs> couple of weeks and beyond.